Hey guys, it's Riley Byrne from fixpractice.com. In today's video, what I wanted to talk about is what to do after the NUS procedure if you're still not happy with your body. Uh, because the NUS procedure, sure, it's going to bring out your chest. So they put the bars through and bring out your indented sternum. Um, but it's not going to address rib flare, it's not going to address posture, and it's not going to address the fact that you don't have much muscle, which is probably three of the main reasons you don't like your body aside from the indented chest as well. Um, you know, for me, having like a more milder case of pectus, and I know this is shared with a lot of people out there, for me, actually, the rib flare and just my lack of musculature annoyed me more than the indent itself. And, and especially now that I've been able to develop my physique, I actually like the depression of my sternum because it makes my pecs look bigger. Um, but anyway, so the, the NUS procedure for people with a more severe case of pectus can be a good option, especially if there's a health complication. I generally recommend avoiding it just because it is expensive. It's pretty scary. It's a big, big surgery and, and quite painful with a long rehab process time. Um, but, you know, that's my maybe my individual bias there. You know, I still do think it can be a good option for some people with really deep pectuses, even if there isn't a health complication, um, because it, it is gonna give you the best effect in terms of bringing out your chest. My training doesn't bring out your chest. It just builds muscle around, improves posture, and develops pecs to make it look less noticeable. And the vacuum bell therapy is the other option, which actually will help bring out your sternum, but you know, it takes a lot of time, consistent use, and it's not gonna bring it out to the same extent as surgery, okay? With the same permanence either. But so anyway, the video and the address that I'm trying to make is what we do after surgery, either your, and something we find often with pectus and the NUS procedure is when the bars get taken out, they're normally in there for a year or two. When they get taken out after surgery, then sometimes the sternum recollapses a little bit, normally not to the same depth that it was before, but it does recollapse. So then they're left with still a level of an indent and you know the posture and everything, the rib flare, which never got addressed anyway. Um, and so people still wanna change their bodies even after surgery. So don't be really upset about it. If that's you, you're not alone. I've coached you know, dozens of people who've had surgery and still weren't happy. Uh, I've also seen lots of comments on YouTube asking for this video. Um, and yeah, it, it, it's really common. So you're not alone at all. Um, and to be honest, the steps you would take would be the same steps that if you didn't have surgery, there's no real difference. Uh, you need to start implementing exercise to build muscle. You need to start changing your nutrition to then make the exercise actually build muscle. Because if you start exercising without changing your diet, you're really limiting your results. Um, and you need to start stretching to improve the posture. Same thing, same steps, exactly what I coach my clients on and provide them programming for, nutrition, you know, bodybuilding style training, um, stretching, and also some cardio training just to improve cardiorespiratory fitness and improve the heart and lung function and overall health and well-being. So there are things, you know, so as I said before, it's the exact same steps, but you need to start incorporating it. Don't think surgery is some miracle fix and all pectus problems are gone because as I said before, the rib flare is still there, the bad posture is still there, the lack of musculature is still there, and often there's still a level of a depression in the chest and lack of muscular development in the chest that we want to build up and to build a good physique because the reality is for most of us, um, the, the thing that gets us down with pectus is the way we look and we need to do address all those things to really be happy in how we look in my opinion um, well I certainly would you know if I if I didn't build this muscle I would never have been happy in how I look but at the same time if I didn't also improve my posture and improve the rib flare I wouldn't have been happy with how I look so what are the steps then what do we take well firstly you need to start working out okay and it needs to be predominantly resistance-based training with a focus, especially at the start on the posterior chain, so the back, the glutes, uh, that is because they're the muscles we need to develop to improve the rounded shoulders posture and the anterior pelvic tilt posture, which is what I like to comment the two of them as pectus posture because they make the pectus condition look worse. So we wanna start developing our posterior chain, stretching tight muscles, typically gonna be like the chest, the hips, the quads. Um, and then we also need to start just overall training as well, train your core, that's really important for the rib flare to getting nice developed six pack and obliques um, and we need to also eat in a way to facilitate a lean muscular physique which is high protein high nutrients and the appropriate amount of calories depending on whether you need to really be gaining weight or whether you need to be losing weight or you know figuring out for you what the appropriate amount of calories is and quantifying how much you're consuming to make sure you get that result 
And with the weight training, you know, same thing. It needs to be uh, quantified. You need to be tracking it. You need to be making sure you're progressing and it needs to not be random, but instead structures. Random workout gives you random results. That's why, you know, I tell people to sign up to my program. That's why I have my coaching and my programming because it gets results. There's too many of you who are just trying to figure this out on your own and not getting a result. So I would encourage, link in description, to sign up to coaching because then you don't have to guess. You know, you have the program laid out. It's worked, proven you know, hundreds of client testimonials before you. So, you know, you're going to get a good result as long as you follow it. But yeah, they're the steps, the steps you need to take. Um, I know that that's a lot and can be overwhelming. So again, why coaching can be, can be beneficial, but remember this is a marathon, not a sprint. The thing that leads to the best results is consistency and adherence over time. So making this part of a sustainable lifestyle for you, a sustainable routine, focusing on the posterior chain, also wanting to train the chest though, but you just got to stretch it out as well. But we do need to develop the chest around the indent and that's a really important part of my training process too. Um, so yeah, guys, I hope this was helpful. I hope if you are someone who's just had the surgery that you know this gives you a bit of like, um, you you know, peace of mind knowing that you're not alone. Um, and if you're thinking about surgery, at least you know, you know, either way, you should be implementing exercise. It's going to be the same process, okay? The surgery or not, we do need to build our bodies up. We need to build muscle um, if you want to, anyway, like the way you look and make your pectus look as least noticeable as possible in its whole hol holistic nature, not just the indent, but the rib flare, the pot belly, the posture, all of that, okay? So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Um, like this video if you found it helpful. Uh, remember to subscribe for future videos and I'll see you in the next one and comment below any video suggestions you would like me to talk about. Peace, guys. Bye.